Okay, we'll get started. We welcome you to the Future of Payments webinar. Uh, we'll be sharing our insights from our UK study where we identified how people were paying during the COVID uh, quarantine lockdown, um, which was in place, and obviously understand how that's kind of affected behaviours uh, over the Christmas 2020 period and beyond. I uh, can't believe we're already mentioning Christmas at this stage. I'm Sebastian Flynn-Skulkbeck, the Managing Director uh, of DaVinci Payments here in Europe. Uh, leading, the, leading the charge for Europe from uh, our London office. I've been with DaVinci for about two and a half years, but I've actually worked with the brand for about 10 years prior to my appointment with the, uh, with the company. Just a little bit about DaVinci uh, for those that, that haven't heard much about us yet. DaVinci Europe is based in London. Uh, we've been the art and science and about 25 years experience to deliver great value in payments for all our stakeholders. Our payment solutions include virtual and physical prepaid, push pay and other forms issued instantly. Our payment methods are packed with choice, flexibility, branding for companies to pay and engage with customers, employees, contractors, channel partners and businesses. These are who we see our typical audiences are. Before we begin, just a few house cleaning notes. Uh, in a few days after this webinar, we will be emailing you a YouTube link for the recording of this presentation and a full copy of the study in its entirety. Um, we've also conducted a US study uh, where the copy of this is also available. Uh, you can get the link of that from our website as well. Um, and we're also conducting the same study um, of Canadian participants to get an understanding of, of their sentiment and that will be available come September. If you have any questions at any time during the presentation, select the orange menu button in the top right corner and open the questions. There you can type and send in your questions. Um, we have allocated a bit of time at the end of this presentation to, to go through these questions. We'll try and get through as many as we can. Everyone who signed up for today's presentation will receive a copy of the presentation via email and a link to the recording of the presentation, as I mentioned just before. We also have a, uh, a quick snap survey that we will, or snap poll that we'll be uh, pushing forward to you at some point during the presentation. Uh, we encourage everybody to answer it. It's totally anonymized. No one will uh, will see it, and we will not be using any of the results for anything other than this presentation. It's a bit of fun. It's also just to see how we, you know, how we all, what our sentiment is, and how we engage with this uh, with this study. If you'd like to learn more about Da Vinci or reach me with any specific questions, uh, please go to uh, www.davincipayments.co.uk and click on uh, contact in the top navigation menu. Pop me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So today, leading our presentation uh, is Da Vinci's CEO, David, David Josephs. Uh, David has decades of experience in payments, including leading Visa's uh, push payment business in Europe for London. Um, he also headed the, uh, the debit and prepaid products at Visa for North America um, and leading prepaid businesses for JP Morgan Chase um, and so he has a wealth of knowledge and experience in the industry and uh, significant insights into the study that he'll be presenting to you today. We'll bri uh, briefly share our methodology um, and the overview of the findings and then we'll go into insights for this presentation. So just a formality on the methodology. So Da Vinci Payments conducted a UK national study to identify how those uh, during the COVID-19 quarantine um, were paying and were receiving payments and how this may impact uh, the way that they pay and receive payments um, during the 220 Christmas shopping season and beyond over the next 12 months. The survey was conducted online with about 100, 501 participants, pre-screened to reflect the UK population with 96 uh, confidence via a survey monkey panel conducted towards the tail end of June uh, of this year. So without any further ado, I'll hand over to David um, to go over this and then we can turn over to some questions at, at the end of the presentation. Thanks so much, Seb, and thank you all for being here. We conducted this study to provide some clarity as to where payments are right now. When there are dramatic shifts in our daily lives, there are always assumptions about how the market is behaving but it's important to look a little deeper and find insights that might surprise you, or in the very least, provide a more holistic view. I wanna point out that the questions we asked in this study were focused on transactions, 
and not necessarily on spend volume. We wanted to get a sense of how people are living their lives, so we focused on how often rather than how much. We'll review our findings in five segments based on these key insights. Online shopping continues to grow. Mobile payments are rising significantly as a portion of all remote payments. New payment technologies continue to be adopted across the board. Card payments are as popular as ever, but are being used in new form factors. And how people spend influences how they want to be paid. The Future of Payments study provides insights into preference by a variety of demographic attributes for a more transparent view. We'll share some of that today with much more of that in the study you'll receive after the webinar. I mentioned that online shopping has grown. The migration from brick and mortar spend to digital channels isn't new. Payment players and merchants have been adapting for years to both respond to and drive online activity. However, during the lockdown phase, we saw 60% of people do more than half their shopping online. That's not really a surprise considering the, uh, the lockdown orders. Online shopping is up 41% versus the same period in 2019. And today, online accounts for nearly a third of all shopping. While we saw some variance, every segment under the age of 56 has more than half their shopping done online. Gen Z and millennials are substantially even higher online, with 18 to 38 year olds averaging over 70% doing more than half their shopping online. And in this group, if you narrow it down to 26 to 30 year olds, they're at 78%. 56 year olds are at 42%, but they are quickly catching up. What's a bit more surprising is that the trends towards remote commerce seem to be increasing as we look to the future. When we fielded this survey, most of the country remained in some state of tight lockdown. Over the course of the survey, there were still no clear dates on when and how the UK economy would be reopening. Honestly, I expected that people would signal more intent to shop in person as they looked to the future. However, we found just the opposite. Online spending is anticipated to grow even more during the holiday season, up eight percentage points from where it is now, with 43% of total transactions expected to be online for the upcoming holiday season. Nearly two thirds intend to do more than half their holiday shopping online, and the biggest increases are in people over the age of 40. So if that much shopping is happening online, how are people doing their actual shopping? For that many folks to be shopping remotely, they must be able to access merchants. And they can. 98% of those we surveyed have at least one connected device. This spans all income levels, all age groups. While everyone is connected, there are some differences in how people use those connections. Two thirds of 18 to 38 year olds use mobile for more than half of their online purchases. For those older than 38, about 50% do more than half of their online shopping using mobile. And the phone use is driven by apps. 87% of all respondents are using payment apps. Most have more than one, and the prevalence of more payment apps is correlated with income. The higher your income, the more payment apps you have. This does vary a bit with age, as nearly all of the 31 to 38 year olds have payment apps, and that figure drops to half when looking at people older than 56. Looking forward, an astonishing 68% of people indicated that they are likely to use phones for 100% of their e-commerce, with 85% of millennials indicating that they would be 
entirely mobile. We've been talking about settings. We've been talking about devices. I'd like to share some of the findings regarding payment preferences in more detail. And I'd like to make a distinction between stores of value and spending form factors. Most people are using traditional credentials for their purchases. Debit cards linked to current accounts, prepaid cards, credit cards. The form factors though are changing as we expect that they would. Physical cards are being supplemented by mobile wallets and a variety of payment apps. This is another area where preferences are pretty consistent across all demographic segments. These payment preferences are not just for mobile shopping, however. In-person commerce has the tried and true remaining strong. Cash, debit and credit cards, prepaid cards, checks, all remain top choices. Yet we also see the rise of new form factors, even for in-person transactions. 13% use mobile contactless payments for in-person transactions. As Seb mentioned, we're asking a quick question among those on the call. Please, now let us know what percentage of your shopping you are currently doing online. While you're answering the question, a quick reminder. If you'd like to access the Future of Payments United States study, you can find it on our website. Go to davincipayments.com slash research dash studies to download your copy. We will also send you an invitation to our Future of Payments Canada webinar briefing taking place in the September. September. If you would like to contact our team to learn more about our payments capabilities, go to davincipayments.co.uk to learn more and click contact in the top navigation to reach us. Now for the quick answers to the survey. What percentage of your Almost everybody is doing over half of their shopping online, quite consistent with the um, findings from the study. We've been talking about how people shop and how they pay. Let's spend a few minutes and look at how and why people get paid. People tend to get paid a lot less frequently than they spend. On average, they get paid between one and four times per month. And the reasons people get paid are not too surprising. They get paid wages, they receive government benefits, they get incentives and rewards, and there are various types of reimbursement. However, when I look closely at this, there are a few that caught my eye as being more recent additions. Peer-to-peer -peer payments probably would not have been as high on this list a few years ago. Similarly, payments for gig and part-time work have exploded recently. And payments for cryptocurrency payouts? That's something that might not even have made this list in years past. This shows that just as spending form factors have changed and evolved, the reasons people get paid are continuing to evolve as well. So that's why people get paid. Let's also look at how. Similarly, the hows haven't changed too much either. Direct deposit, checks, cards are very prominent. But just like the whys, the hows also have some interesting new entrants. Form factors are changing here too. Payment apps and peer-to-peer -peer apps are becoming increasingly popular. People are also receiving payments via secure links that they access via email or SMS messages. 
one of the key findings that we saw from this survey is that how you want to be paid is influenced by how you intend to spend. The previous discussion was focused on why people get paid and how they currently get paid. Wages, rewards, government benefits provided via direct deposit, prepay cards, checks, et cetera, et cetera. However, we then asked people what was important to them when they were getting paid. And this is what they told us. When they think about getting paid, ease to receive, accepted most, play, most places, ease to spend. When they think about it, they're thinking, can I use this to spend my money in many places? They are wanting their payments to be easy to spend as well as easy to receive. They want it fast and they want it to be secure. They want it to be secure in transit. They want it to be secure when they have it and they want it to be secure when it's being used. They are thinking about spending in other countries and other currencies. And remember, these are not answers to how people want to spend. Rather, they are answers to what people think about when they are asked how they want to be paid. This implies that any payers out there should be thinking about spend form factors and stores of value as they think about how they make their disbursements. It's not as simple as saying, here's your money. That was a very, very quick whip through our key findings. Thank you for your time and for participating in the presentation. To summarize the key findings again, online shopping continues to grow and will increase during the Christmas season. Mobile payments are rising significantly as a portion of all remote payments and significant demographic segments anticipate doing all their remote shopping via mobile. New payment technologies continue to be adopted across the board. Card payments are just as popular as ever, but are being used in new form factors driven by apps and mobile wallets. And as we just discussed, how people spend influences how they want to be paid. Now, I think we have a few questions and we certainly have time for them. So Seb, if you can sort of work through the questions, that would be great. Yep, just giving it another minute to get these questions come through. Can we have one here already teed up um, to start with David? Um, do you see virtual card payments becoming more widely used than physical card payments given the trends you've identified today? Yeah, as, as mobile becomes the primary way that people pay both online and in person, um, if you remember there's 13% of folks use uh, mobile payments um, for in-person transactions, virtual prepaid, uh, debit and credit card payments will become the most used because of speed and convenience. Those credentials can be used in person shopping, in um, remote shopping. So absolutely, I see virtual card payments absolutely becoming more widely used than physical cards. Right. Um, another interesting question here, actually we've got a couple more that's come through. What is your prediction for vouchers in the future of payments? Vouchers are going to be around for some time. Um, they serve a great purpose. They're, they, they're, they're very familiar um, to both payers as well as people who receive benefits. Um, but other payments that can pay and spend faster and have greater flexibility to better meet the demands of the market, um, like prepaid, um, is where the future of those kinds of payments will be. I think vouchers will be around. Um, and they will remain, but I also think you're going to see con consumer preferences moving towards more um, more liquidity. Thank you. Um, 
This is an interesting one as well, David. You've, I mean, you've been in the industry for quite some time and you've seen how things have evolved uh, during your tenure at the various different uh, entities you've been part of. Um, this is one that looks at trends. So where do you see payments five years from now? Five years from now. Five years from now is a really, really long horizon. So I will, um, I will look into my somewhat misty crystal ball. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Um, paying will be more effortless. It will be contactless and more secure. All the new ways that we use mobile will spawn new payment form factors. Think about think about how mobile has kind of changed our lives. It started it's, it started with texting, um, and then um, and and then sort of you know texting apps, um, whether those are embedded in the phone or whether things like WhatsApp or those types of things, and then uh, payment payments started sort of following the way that we just interact with each other. So as um, new technologies change the way that we interact with each other, payments will be fast followers onto those new technologies. Um, virtual card payments are going to remain fundamental. I really do believe that those stores of value that we talked about before, um, prepaid card balances, um, current account balances linked to debit cards, lines of credit that are accessed through credit cards um, are going to re remain the fundamental stores of value. Um, but form factors are going to continue to be very, very different. Um, enhanced biometric verification, um, voice recognition, iris recognition, um, any way you can imagine using your phone, any way you can imagine using sort of a connected watch or any other devices, um, uh, all types of wearables. I used, uh, when, I was, when I was actually in a, one of my previous spots, um, one of my colleagues was um, always testing new wearables. Um, he, he, he had rings that you could pay with. He had watches you could pay with. He had wristbands you could pay with. Um, and I used to imagine him sometimes walking down the street and having um, ATMs to sort of spit money at him because all of his devices were uh, sort of activating. So as you just think about um, where uh, any type of interaction with, um, with, with any other type of device can take place, I think payments are going to follow those forms. The last question we have here um, that seems to come in is, you know, you mentioned you conducted a study in the US, which, which we did. Um, and this is one that I, I would want to compare against. Did you find any similar findings when you looked at the US data? Very similar. The findings were very, very similar. Um, the basic themes, uh, you know, were not terribly different on either side of the Atlantic. Um, one thing is that in the U.S., um, ages sort of 39 and up, um, sort of those those sort of older cohorts are more engaged um, in online and mobile shopping. Um, it's funny, my mother, my mother's going to hate me for saying this, but my mother turned 80 um, eight days ago, and she is not someone that I would necessarily call as a cutting edge person in terms of technology. Um, but she has, she has three or four different apps that she pays for. Um, she buys coffee with an app. Um, you know, she's, she's quite engaged with her, um, with her phone in terms of how she does her shopping. I don't say that my mom is necessarily typical of all of the respondents. Um, but she is an example of, of sort of what, what we saw, um, in the States versus in the United Kingdom. Um, in terms of so the the Christmas shopping season, um, those those figures and 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 those same findings that you'll find even more um, and even higher percentage of online shopping um, are consistent um, in both the U.S. and the U.K. and uh, that's actually quite aligned by age groups as well. So um, yeah, pretty consistent. A couple of differences, but pretty consistent. 
Great. If there are no more questions, um, I want to kind of say thank you, David, for taking us through the study. Uh, good insights. Um, and to all of those that, that attended, thank you very much for joining us and for taking the time out to, to listen to the findings from this webinar. Uh, just a reminder, again, we will be forwarding you a, um, a video link of this webinar uh, very, very soon in the next few days. Uh, to request the US version of the study again, or any other studies that we've done in the past, please do visit www.davincipayments.co.uk-research-studies. Uh, you'll receive an invitation for our upcoming Future of Payments Canada, uh, which will be released in September. That would be another comparative or another interesting comparison to the stats you've heard today about the UK and what David just explained about the US study. Uh, and if you have any interest in our payment solutions or have further questions about the study, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us again at davincipayments.com uh, and click on the contact uh, the contact button and send us a, a message. Um, so with that, again, wanted to say thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much for attending and we look forward to hosting you at a future webinar.